Like a hell broth boil. <laughs> double, double. Trouble and toil. What have we got here? Is a slide. Sorry, I'm shaking everywhere. This real quick video. Okay, all I want to talk about. We are redoing a slide for a Beretta. We're gonna re-blue this. This is gonna get refinished, but we are stripping it from the old, there is some, you can see, still some residue of some old um, Cerakote or gun coat or some aftermarket. I haven't been able to identify it. Aftermarket finish here that needed to be removed. This covered the whole thing. Yes, it was horrible. It's been spending a lot of time, so that ultrasonic cleaner goes in there for six minutes, sits in that solution, ultrasonic cleaner, it helps me chip away at this. It comes out of the ultrasonic cleaner and it gets scrubbed, 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 scrubbed with a little bit more uh, cleaning, cleaning solvent, but, what I wanted to say was that when I first got this, this was covered, it looked like that. Now, you might, if this was you, situation were reversed. You may be tempted to immediately take and use an abrasive on this, and you would be gravely mistaken. When Beretta made this, we can see that there is an incredible glass bead finish applied to this particular chunk of steel. It's very nice and it will look great when it is freshly re-glued. So what we want to do, we don't want to use any abrasive here. We want to remove this finish chemically in order to preserve the metal finish that's already here. This saves us time. And, and not just a little bit of time, but if you look at this slide, you can see we've got flats, flats, and flats, and flats, and flats. This is on a whole, the front slide serrations here, front cocking serrations are on a completely different plane than these rear cocking serrations. There's a radius here. There's a radius here. There's a radius here <laughs> along the back. The edges of this have have had the edges, the edges knocked off of them the whole way down. So this has been chamfered. This thing is a very, these dovetails are super sharp. This is a very precise piece of gear. We want to preserve it the best we possibly can. So this thing's gonna keep going back over into ultrasonic clear. It's gonna come out of the ultrasonic clear. It's gonna get brushed off. It's gonna go back in there until all of this stuff is gone. And then we're gonna do our final final prep on doing a balloon job like i said real quick video just talking about finishes do not use abrasives on these all of the metal that the factory put there probably needs to stay there we don't want to remove metal last thing that you do whenever you're working on a gun is remove metal from it that's it if you liked the video like the video catch me later so we've had a bit of an upset here I did a video talking to you guys about the process of removing uh, old finishes and we were taking our time and being super careful about this. This is completely prepped and ready to go. Um, the last time that this had been finished, you can see about here, I'm trying to, this reflection is hard to grab. So you're gonna, you gotta, you gotta sort of bear with me here. But you can see here on the frame, this looks like there's still material here, but it's not. Um, when this left the factory from Beretta, it had a coating on it, had a coating on top of the metal, and it was, that coating had uh, seen its service life, and it was then removed, and then somebody else had coated it, and when they had done that, they did not remove all of the coating from Beretta, and then bead blasted this, and left, these raised edges here 
Um, now, this is pretty disappointing to me because I was ta we were taking so much time to see that these were removed, to see that this color and this old coating was removed properly. Um, and it all was removed properly. However, there's just sometimes there are things that are just out of our control and this is one of those uh, one of those things. So if if and we wanted to take this farther, we would have to use a block uh, uh, a big um, we would uh, a big granite block uh, with some sandpaper on it and what we would do is we would grind these flats and grind this stuff back flat again and we could we could do that we could do we'd have to make those grinds and we'd have to really be cautious about these radii these radii here because we've got a flat line that curves right this curves out that's not that's very difficult to get in there with a with a piece of sandpaper or, or or to grind this out we have to be very careful to not break this nice defined edge and not break that defined edge it's a very small area to get into so um like i said there's there's some there's even some here i'm pretty disappointed um to find that uh that the la essentially the last guy uh, left some of this stuff here. This is about to this is about to go in the bluing tank. Um, this thing is completely prepped. All it has to do is just get so it's just get uh, acetoned um, is its final just acetone bath. Um, but this thing is completely prepped. We're down to the steel, and all of the old coating has been removed. All the old color has been removed. Um, but yeah, um, so the the and the. Uh, uh, customer, person who, who interested party, person who, who, who brought me this, uh, who brought me this job doesn't want to take this any farther. Uh, they're saying, no, let's just uh, let's just let's just blow it and 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 make sure uh, and make sure that we're going to be mechanically that we're going to be mechanically sound and that the color is going to be consistent all the way through the piece. And that's what we're going to have. So I just wanted to show you that sometimes even taking uh, the most care and doing everything that you're supposed to do, sometimes you still don't win. Uh, even doing everything that you're supposed to do because the last guy didn't do everything he was supposed to do. So uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll do another video when this is finished and um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So our slide is completely prepped, ready. It's had an acetone bath. We have some, we're using Ultra Black 400 from EPI. This is uh, not exactly a bluing, this is more of a nitride. We're still going to get a, a black oxide finish. Um, it's blacker than normal uh, old school nitride bluing, but um, it, it, it works really well. So we've got it in a pot and this gets heated to 275 degrees. We just started it. Heat the solution to 275 degrees insert your part, leave that in there for a long enough period of time. Uh, you want it to sort of sit in there, the longer you sit in there, the deeper the deeper the uh, finish goes. And then afterwards, uh, we're actually gonna, oh, this is gonna be, when it's done, this is gonna be filled with uh, hot water. It gets dunked in hot water to uh, render the salts inert. And then after that, we actually hose this thing down with uh, some good old fashioned water displacing oil. So um, yeah, so uh, that's essentially the um, essentially balloon process. This stuff isn't terribly expensive. Uh, I think it's 40 bucks, 40 bucks a gallon. The uh, issue is, is that uh, hazmat shipping is quite a bit for it. So last time I think I bought two gallons, I've gotten a lot of projects out of it. I'm gonna have to buy another two gallons, but uh, yeah, anyway, that is blowing set up. Well, I, it, I should do like a slow-mo review. No, I'll just do it. All right. There it is. All finished. Redone. We can see those high spots that were left, but this thing is still wet from the water displacing oil, but it has been blued. And it came out really good. I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm really happy with it. So 
it's a nice uh, nice finish I showed you guys the system how it works and uh, yeah like I said this has still got a lot of WD on it but we'll go a little bit further here but uh, yeah this is presentable so all nice and reblued blacky black and black and black yeah cool catch you later